Alright guys, we are back for another Dokkan Battle video, and it is time to update the tier list. Uh, we have two new Dokkan Fest LRs. They are the 8th Anniversary Part 1 LRs. Uh, both very good, both very fun characters. Um, they have the new mechanics, the standby skill, right, and the finishing attack and all that good stuff. So it is pretty interesting, right, to have them introduced into the game. So I am continuing to do top 10 LRs. Um, I probably eventually, I, I'm going to keep, I, I like that I started doing these monthly tier lists, right? Just sort of like updating, you know, based on like a Dokkan Fest uh, tier list or Easy or blah, blah, blah. Eventually, I'm going to split it into Dokkan Fest LRs, I think Yellow Coin LRs, and then also Carnival LRs. It's probably what I'm going to do, but it's going to be quite a while before we could do that since we only have three Carnival LRs. I'd say there's a pretty good chance we're going to get two more Carnival LRs uh, this month for part two. Well, I say this month, but probably in two weeks. Two weeks, we should we should get uh, part two LRs. We'll see how it's going to go. So let's go ahead and jump in. I want to grab spots 10 and 9 right here because these two characters are very similar. Um, I don't see any reason to sort of split them up or change how things are. Uh, with these two characters. Um, basically, I feel like their performance is pretty similar, actually. Uh, you know, Golden Frieza is much stronger defensively, you know, the first turn. But, you know, he is going to slowly lose part of his damage reduction. Whereas, really, this Goku only gets stronger as the fight goes on. My main reasoning for putting the Goku above Frieza um, is that Goku is also supporting. Goku has this. And then Goku's active skill is really powerful, right? Where, it, you know, he's going to have guaranteed crits the whole turn. And he's giving allies key. And, you know, at the time that you're able to do the active skill, you're also going to unlock the Scouter, which is just really crazy. You know, Golden Frieza does not support and has the weakest active skill of any top tier character in the game. I, I seriously, like, I can't think of another really, really good character whose active skill is completely worthless. Like, like, Golden Freeze's active skill literally is, is trash and, and does not help at all. Um, that should pretty much cover those two, right? They're very similar. Uh, next, we're going to grab the 7th Anniversary LRs. Um, I still see no reason to split them up. You know, they have the same kits. Uh, I do think that with the update tier, uh, the 8th Anniversary, uh, it, it helps the LR GT, like, you know, Super Saiyan 4 GT unit. The gods don't really have a big place because the gods the gods are they on final trump card they are on final trump card okay 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 so so we could utilize them on the super saiyan 3 goku and super saiyan 2 vegeta team that is definitely for sure and they of course are on like bond apparent and child and stuff like that um they just have you know very similar kits in base right remember they're exactly the same transformed they both have the attack break which is really really powerful right the gods are getting the the dodge per rainbow key sphere lr super saiyan 4 gogeta is getting the damage reduction per key sphere he's got this they both have the incredibly powerful active skill they're both really good um lr super saiyan 4 gogeta is definitely more of a factor um after the eighth anniversary update since you know we got another major powerful gt character so we're gonna have more gt you know sort of characters with that gt link in the mix uh, definitely still like them. I, I feel like their kits for the 7th Anniversary LRs are very good. Um, even once they fall off this list, I feel like they're still going to be solid units. We'll see what the end difficult content at the end of this anniversary is going to look like. Keep in mind, you know, people were are screaming and crying that there's no difficult content right now. There wasn't at the start of the 7th Anniversary either, right? Like, do you consider Legic a tough fight? Hmm? Are, are we saying that Red Zone Lord Slug is a super tough fight? Not really, man. Not really. No. No, they're not. So, um, we'll, we'll see what the end of the difficult content is like at the end of this anniversary, right? And how that might potentially affect characters like, you know, the 7th Anniversary LRs and stuff like that. We'll see. Uh, next, Final Form Cooler. Yeah, crazy. I, I do not feel like Cooler has fallen off at all. He hasn't. And he's at 7. It's just so crazy. I mean, this isn't this isn't an indictment on his performance or anything. It's just better characters came out. That's it. Better units are out, man. Uh, you know, it, it's just you can't fall in love and pretend that one of these characters is just going to be like the greatest forever. It doesn't work that way. It's a gotcha game, right? They're constantly releasing newer, hotter, better shit, right? They don't want you to sweep every event in the game with, you know, Final Form Cooler 
they want you to oh now we have to get lr final form cooler two right like now now we gotta get you know lr super saiyan 4 gogeta 2 right like to beat all these difficult events so uh cooler is still ridiculously powerful um i don't feel like his team has dropped off or anything like that uh the since the last time i've done several of these lists the only real change maybe is you know just like red zone cell max but that's not a fight that it like any of the units on this list would be bad for uh like maybe this Goku is the only character on this list that who kind of is put into a, a bit of a bad situation in the red zone cell max fight. Uh, next we have carnival Goku. Now uh, carnival Goku, I feel like sustained uh, more of a drop off in the eighth anniversary than any other character. The main reason is that this guy is super good, right? Defensive stacking. He's got his revive, um, and then he also has got guard. Really powerful, like, trio of abilities, right? Great abilities for the super difficult content. The issue is that on a super top tier team, the revive now is probably more important to get with GT Goku and LR Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta than this Super Saiyan Carnival Goku. So that hurts this guy a little bit, because if this guy can't revive, he is, like, not really that good. Because it's like, once his HP falls below... What is it? It's 58%, right? Uh, oh, no, 59%. As soon as he falls below 59%, um, at that point, he's no longer guarding. And without guard, this guy's a fraud. Like, he's worthless, right? So, it's like, if you run this guy in the same team as GT, Goku, and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, you basically can't switch with them and do the Spirit Bomb. Like, you have to prioritize this guy's revive, or else he's a completely dead character. So... That right there hurts, because there was a lot of discussion last year about, like, Vegeta and Trunks versus Carnival Goku. I mean, let's just be real. Vegeta and Trunks have always been better since they won. It was obvious. But uh, a lot of people were thinking, because Vegeta and Trunks have to be locked in slot one, that they would age out, and, you know, this guy might age better. And I thought that there's certainly, a, a, definitely a chance of that, right? We're going to get better slot one characters than Vegeta and Trunks. Like, they're eventually going to be gone, too, for sure. Um, but I said... If a character that needs to revive more than this guy comes out, this guy is going to plummet. And that's sort of what happened. The good news is that Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, you don't need to do the standby for them to be good. They are still good regardless, right? So that does significantly help them out and help this guy out. This guy's still really good, though. You could still run him and all these other, you know, LRs on the same team. All right, next we have AJL LR Gohan. Now, Gohan drops a little bit here. I mean, there's, of course, just, you know, again, newer, better, hotter units. Um, I, I do wonder if maybe I, I overrated Gohan a little bit slightly right out of the gate, just because he's so explosive. I mean, people think of Gohan, and they think of Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, you know, doing a 25 into a 12, into a 14, into a 16 million attack stats, right? And it's just like, oh my god. But, like, that's not... Like, that, that is still tough to do, right? Like, you, you pretty much... This Android condition, well, not right there, but this Android condition right here it does sort of make his transformation still pretty tough. You could use the Gammas on some teams, or you could use Android 8 on other teams. You could definitely make it happen, right? But it, you still have to jump through many hoops to get to Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, who, it, you know, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is seemingly equivalent to me or up there with you know, the orange Piccolo transformation and the two spirit bombs of the other characters. Like, just, like, the, the strongest things you kind of have access to as a player right now for Dokkan. Um, the problem with this Gohan, really, compared to Carnival Goku and Vegeta and Trunks, this Gohan, turn one is very weak, I've found. And you can get really bad luck if this Gohan is in turn two and you get slapped turn one, and this guy's not, like, if turn two, this guy's not guarding, you've probably lost, right? Like, you outright lose. This guy is not good without his guard early in the fight, right? And his guard is HP conditional as well. So, it, it you know, it, it's like, th this is the thing with both of these characters, right? Is like, that HP condition can really make you struggle. But, you know, if Gohan, if you have a nice clean start, you know, Gohan can build up. He could be incredible in this form. And then, of course, he's so explosive in Super Saiyan 2. But remember, you don't want to think of, like, rank this guy purely off this. We're not doing that. We're not ranking this Gohan purely off of this, right? Otherwise, he's, you know, one. It's like you gotta, you can't judge these units 100% by their peak. 
and you can't judge them by their basement either, right? Like, you, you have to kind of, like, what's a level of consistency that these characters can bring to the table? All right, next we have Vegeta and Trunks. Um, I, so I guess we could grab number three as well. I, I actually really, I, I, I was really wanting to put Vegeta and Chunks at three and I was like, should I, I, I was close. I, I decided to just stay with, uh, orange Piccolo at three, right? I, I just feel like orange Piccolo his domination, on, dude, look at these teams. Vegeta and Trunks, you know, they're on a bunch of teams, but they're not, like, this is crazy, right? Like, this guy's on Power of Wishes, Powerful Comeback, Connected Hope, Battle of Wits, Gifted Warriors, Revenge, Rapid Growth, Worthy Rivals, Giant Form, Namekian, Full Power. Like, these are teams that are dying for help, and this guy is just the king on all these teams, right? I feel like this guy's impact over the next year is probably going to be higher than Vegeta and Trunks. It's just, he's just too good with his guard at the start, you know, the strong super attack effects, his build up. He potentially can be like the best character in the game. If you get this right here where he gets the seven hits and then he gets the full 50% damage reduction, just ridiculous. I, I think this orange Piccolo is great. And then remember you still have this, which is like, you know, super Saiyan two Gohan or one of these spirit bombs in terms of its power, this orange Piccolo transformation, I just felt like I shouldn't put Vegeta and Trunks above him. Now, Vegeta and Trunks just got a massive buff, right? Because the 8th anniversary LRs are thriving next to Vegeta and Trunks. As powerful as the 8th anniversary LRs are, they're not slot 1 characters. Depending upon how the fight goes, you can certainly get away with running them in slot 1, right? For sure. But for the most part, you're running them in slot 2, right? They're just way stronger in slot 2. So... You know, oh my god, it's almost like this character is a slot one god. So they can, you know, sort of handle that. They link up incredibly well with the 8th anniversary LRs. They're guarding. You have the uber powerful active skill. They still, have, again, this is still one of the best active skills in the game with, you know, the guaranteed crits for the turn and the ridiculous defensive buff. So Vegeta and Trunks are just stronger. Remember the morons who were saying that this unit was going to fall out of the top 10 or that this unit was going to age out super fast? They just proved that they don't understand the game. Slot 1 viability is like the most important thing. That is like the rarest thing. And it's like this character, depending upon what happens, right? They do need to stack and they do need to build up right here. This is important. Uh, you know, when they get hit, they can take a lot of damage. You know, if you go into the Metal Cooler Core fight, or maybe like Cell Max, something like that, one of the really, you know, hard-hitting bosses you get too fast, this unit can take a lot of damage. But uh, just how effective they are in the trouble spot, which is slot one, you just can't discredit them, right? Uh, people who are hating on the unit just look stupid now. It's just how it is. All right, next, we're going to grab the 2-8th Anniversary LRs. Now, I love, you guys know, all throughout the last year, since day one, I've been putting the LR Gods and LR Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta um, tied in the same spot because they have the same kits. Well, guess what? Uh, we can't do that with these two. Uh, I think GT, Goku, and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta are one, and I do think Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta are two. Now, the thing is, they're both pretty similar in base, right? Actually, just like the 7th Anniversary LRs. Um, this unit is stacking attack, um, and then they build up damage reduction right here. And then this unit is stacking defense, and then they build up crit right here. Uh, I do think stacking defense is significantly better. Like, not even a little bit, but just huge, like, margin better, for sure. But it, it does take a while for them to get to, like, the truly great defensive levels, right? Like, depending upon what happens early in these fights, you could get cooked. You, you could take a lot of damage with them. Whereas, I think this unit in the current sort of difficult event meta, which a lot of these fights are, are more so, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8. Like, you're wrapping the fight up, right? Like, you're not really usually getting that much further than that. Like, you know, past, like, turn 10 or something like that. If that was the case, I think this would be the best unit in the game. But right now, sort of the, the difficult content meta, like, you want to either build up pretty fast, you know, by turn 4 or 5 or something like that. Or, like, it's just sort of, like, shorter term like that, I think is the way it is right now. 
Um, so th they are the same. I, I do like this ability way better than the crit ability. Who cares about the stupid ass crit ability? Both these characters are probably triple supering almost every turn anyway. Give me the damage reduction right there. I mean, this unit's going to be sitting, you know, six, seven, eight hundred k defense with fifty percent damage reduction, and they're stacking attack. And both characters have this just stupid ability of stacking one key permanently with every super attack. I mean, you it's so easy that turn one triple super with both of them, right? Because they have the same abilities of two key per key sphere, a second or third attacker in the turn. It's just really good. I I, I, I think these units are, are incredible in base. Now, the reason I can't put them sort of the same, I think, is because once you do the standby with them, they're just not the same at all, right? Like, if we look at the eighth here, we, we could actually get rid of all of this. If we look at the seventh anniversary LRs, it's like when they transform, they're not that different. It's like this guy has a 50% chance to counter and a 50% chance to additional, whereas they get additional with key and then, you know, they can build up their dodge with this, but they both have attack. Like they're, they're still functionally almost the same unit, right? Like there's not like huge differences in what they're doing. It's, just, it's the same shit, right? Just in a slightly different fashion. These two are not like they're completely different, right? Like look at like, the base Goku and Vegeta, you can't even attack with them. This Vegeta, to me, is the most interesting thing. Because uh, we'll see what difficult content's going to look like. It depends. They have to make super difficult content for this to be, you know, notable. But this Vegeta right here, this this is the strongest defense in the game. Um, You're probably going to have six, 700k defense stacked up by the time you exchange, right? Because you only need to do either four attacks or have H-Moon or 50%. Um, and then you're then guarding, and he gets damage reduction per key sphere. It's just stupid. And he's rainbow orb changing, which means he is... I I've I've said this repeatedly for a lot, right? Characters that rainbow orb change, you're not just, like, doing it for yourself. Like, this character will be able to get orbs, but rainbow orb changing usually means the whole rotation is eating good with orbs. So it's not just this character. And you do need that because you need to get orbs to build up the spirit bomb, right? You could do the super spirit bomb if you get 39 orbs and you just keep building up the damage here. Um, I do really, really, really like um, what this character is able to do here. I, I probably think this unit right here, like there's more potential, I feel like, probably with this than with this, but th this is also so crazy. So this spirit bomb over here, right? is done this is a revive um some people were thinking that you could revive on any rotation after you exchange into this guy or stand by into him it's not true vegeta has to be on rotation and then if anyone on the rotation dies you will do the spirit bomb and then you swap back into gt goku and super saiyan 4 vegeta but like this is really strong eight key 80 percent support um, this Vegeta doesn't really have defense to speak of, so he probably is going to die, right, on whatever turn you're on. Any major boss is taking this guy down, and then you, you know, sort of, like, revive and then smack him with the Spirit Bomb, which is just super crazy. Uh, I, I just think that the way the GT and Super Saiyan 4 unit is constructed is probably just a little bit more efficient and practical in the current like difficult content i mean this is certainly great for if you're fighting like red zone broly or something like that and i mean i think the super spirit bomb the way it works it gets huge buffs from actual like um traditional support so like this spirit bomb with like this guy on rotation giving this is like the strongest attack in the game or something like that. Uh, it is interesting. I mean, you could very easily run both of these guys on the same team. They have incredibly good link sets. They link up super well. I, I just feel like the way they're constructed right now in the current meta of the difficult content, this unit I think is a little bit better. But I, it's not. I I don't want people to get married to that idea. I, like, I very easily could see this unit spending most of the year actually as the number one character in the game. Um, it depends on what the difficult content is like. Because, to me, if we get, you know, if we're fighting the, you know, the, the 2023 equivalent of Red Zone Broly, right? And we're finishing him off routinely in, like, turn 15, this is going to be the best character in the game, right? But, you know, if we're finishing these tough bosses off 
routinely on, you know, turn 7, turn 8, turn 9, turn 10, then this, I think, is the best character in the game. Because they become able to compete with the toughest bosses in the game much faster than this unit does, right? For sure. So, let me know what you guys think um, about GT, Goku, and Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. Um, again, I do feel very good about this. This is the way I would probably rank it at the moment. Um, do I think that Orange Piccolo should be a tier below? Maybe, but I, I do think I'm comfortable with this. And if, you know, we, I, I almost could make a separate, you know what I probably should do? I should make a picture for Transform Cell and Transform Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Because I'm sure people are going to be upset that Cell's not on here, but sorry, he sucks in base. I mean, you could cope with that to the ends of the earth, he does. But if he's transformed, he's up in Z tier. If Gohan is transformed, he's up in Z tier, right? You know, if if LR Ultimate Gohan would getting 24 key every single turn without fail, he's up in Z tier probably. But guess what? Uh, this dude is a fraud who struggles for key. Uh, it's very, very difficult out here for that boy to super attack, or at least get um, the maximum key you want for him to get his full abilities anyway. Uh, this dude is just not good enough at the start. And, I mean, I don't know, LR Goku Black and Zamasu is good, but, like, they're not quite up there. Fusion Zamasu is good, not quite up there. Same like Metal Cooler and the Super Saiyan Goku and Vegeta. Um, I feel good about this. Yep, I, I got no issue with this. Here's what it looked like uh, the last time I updated. Not really too many changes, it looks like. Now, I, I basically, all I did was I just swapped Vegeta and Chunks in front of EJL LR Gohan. That's really the only thing I did. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I potentially again we maybe even could have put vegeta and trunks at three I, but i i don't know I, that orange piccolo transformation man and just all the teams he's on i you know they're going to drop missions and super battle road stages and stuff for all these lower level teams and this guy is just like the king he's so important on a lot of those um lrb slash ultimate gohan he's on a lot of lower level categories as well that could be helpful but uh let me know what you guys think of the top 10 LRs in the game after the 8th anniversary. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.